When I was growing up, there was a a familiar refrain that I heard all the time, something that people have consistently said to me uh, since I was like 11 or 12 years old. Um, and that phrase, uh, that term, if you will, was angry black man. I've heard that all my life. Van is an angry black man. Um, I've heard that so much that I would develop sort of retorts to it, responses, right? You'd say, oh, Van, you're playing the part of the angry black man. Obviously, you know, these are white people that would tell me that. Well, sometimes white people would say it too, but mostly white people would say, Van, you're playing the part of the angry black man. And I would say something like, yo, if you're a black man in America and you're not angry, you're not paying attention. And then everybody would be like, ooh. Um, but I had those comebacks ready because I've heard that so much. Because when someone calls you an angry black man, what they're really doing is telling you how much you're annoying them with your refusal to accept the status quo in America. Now, maybe there's nothing that you can actually do about it, meaning you can't change the structures and the systems that have been built into this country um, to actually keep oppressed um, and marginalized people where they are, but you can call them out. And whenever you call them out, they call you an angry black man, someone who is always rabble rousing, someone who is always in someone's face with an injustice or a complaint um, or making them see the country for what you feel like it really is. Now, the angry black man to society is mostly an annoyance. I mean, we've been angry for a long time and things haven't really changed uh, uh, for us in any real substantive way. A lot of the, the realities of the black experience in America um, have endured even our angriest efforts, our most well thought out efforts, our most passionate efforts. We still got to do more. So normally you're an angry black man. You're annoying. What I've never really heard addressed or called out or lampooned in America is what we have in our hands now which is the angry white man. And the angry white man is not an annoyance. The angry white man is an existential threat to the safety and security of this country. Now, I'm not saying that there's not enough anger and hatred, specifically in my community, um, to go around. I'm not saying that at all. I'm saying that when you're talking about random acts of senseless violence, America has to address the rage that is building up in white men and call it for what it is. One reason that we have to do it is because they, unlike us, have complete freedom in the country, complete freedom of movement, complete freedom of access, complete freedom to everything. Where I go, cops see me, they tap me, they look at me, they profile me. Very difficult for me to go around and commit these acts of violence. White men in this society are essentially like ghosts. Go wherever they want, do whatever they want, act however they feel. And if they're feeling mad and they're feeling repressed and they're feeling angry over ridiculously silly and made up and stupid reasons, they are going to make society feel it. And if we ignore the fact that there is a specific rage demon that is existing in a specific segment of society, then we're going to have these things not only persist, but increase. And if we allow demagogues to stoke that rage demon, to feed it till it becomes a behemoth, then we are also going to see it organized. We're not going to see mass, random mass killings. We're going to see mass mobilizations of militia-like forces that move in and create violence on even a larger scale than what it is right now. Now, we all are aware of why we're not addressing this problem, why this problem is the only uh, persistent criminal activity that's allowed to exist in America and be taken as individual one-offs every case is looked at as an individual one-off no one is connecting the psychosis to one another because 
there's a thing that goes on in America when uh, a white person does something, it's looked at as a good person who's perverted or ill in some way and has done a bad thing. And when a black person or a person of color um, does something, it's us showing everyone who we really are. Um, now, if you're black, you understand that that is a reality. You get that. Um, the question I would ask the rest of the country is, how much are you going to let a double standard kill you? Because you're being killed by a double standard. You're being murdered right now. Everyone is by a double standard. At random, a double standard is walking into uh, a gun store, buying a gun, transporting a gun across state lines like this gentleman in El Paso did, and killing someone. Killing people at random. Families. Inflicting terror onto the society. The society that you say hates terror so much. Being terrorized by the group that you protect the most. Scary times. But I will say they will get scarier if we do not address the growing threat of the angry white man in America.